There is the finger jab. There is the punch. There is the breakfast and then low. Of course, then they use leg straight at a goal. Bruce Lee remains an iconic figure in martial arts history, revered as the epitome of skill and charisma. Despite his tragically short life, his influence on both martial arts and pop culture endures, inspiring countless practitioners to this day. Born Li Junfan in 1940 to a Cantonese opera singer father and a Chinese mother, Bruce's early years were marked by a blend of cultural exposure and hardship. After a brief stint in the United States, his family returned to Hong Kong, where Bruce's fascination with cinema and martial arts began to take shape. As a child actor, he earned the nickname Lee the Little Dragon. However, Bruce's path was not without challenges. Growing up amidst the turmoil of World War II, he found himself drawn into street fights, leading his parents to steer him towards martial arts training for discipline. This decision proved pivotal, leading him to the tutelage of renowned martial artist Yip Man, despite initial obstacles due to his mixed heritage. Under Yip Man's guidance, Bruce honed his skills in Wing Chun Kung Fu, emphasizing discipline and restraint. Despite early struggles, his dedication and talent quickly became evident. He absorbed the teachings of Wing Chun with fervor, blending its techniques with his own innovations and philosophy. By his late teens, Bruce had emerged as a formidable martial artist, transcending the boundaries of tradition. His reputation spread, and he began to make waves in the martial arts community, challenging conventions and pushing the boundaries of what was thought possible. Bruce's journey was not confined to the dojo. He sought to spread his philosophy of martial arts as a way of life. His charisma and magnetism captivated audiences, transcending cultural and linguistic barriers. Through his films and teachings, he became a global icon, inspiring generations of martial artists and enthusiasts. Despite his untimely death at the age of 32, Bruce Lee's legacy endures. His martial prowess and philosophical insights continue to resonate, shaping the landscape of martial arts and popular culture. From his groundbreaking films to his timeless wisdom, Bruce Lee remains the quintessential martial artist, a testament to the power of passion, discipline, and self-discovery. In 1958, he emerged victorious in a boxing tournament for Hong Kong schools, defeating the former champion. However, he found himself frequently involved in street fights, leading to trouble, especially when the parents of one of his opponents reported him to the police. By 1959, his mother decided it would be wise for him to return to the United States and stay with his older sister, Agnes. Upon his arrival in San Francisco, he later relocated to Seattle, where he pursued further education and worked as a live-in waiter. It was during this time that he honed his martial arts skills and began teaching his own style, Jun Fan Gung Fu, opening his first martial arts school in Seattle. After leaving university in early 1964, he moved to Oakland to continue his martial arts training. His prominence grew when he competed in the 1964 Long Beach International Karate Championships, where he showcased his famous one-inch punch for the first time. His reputation as a martial arts expert continued to ascend, setting the stage for his future achievements. Many admired Bruce for introducing something novel, and even martial arts enthusiasts, initially skeptical, embraced learning from him. However, not everyone was pleased with his actions. When Bruce sought to learn Wing Chun, the Chinese community was guarded, especially about teaching it to outsiders. Despite his mixed heritage, Bruce managed to learn with the help of a sponsor. Yet, upon arriving in America, he altered the traditional Wing Chun teachings and opened them to all, angering purists within the Wing Chun community. One notable opponent of Bruce's approach was Wong Jack Man, a martial artist versed in various disciplines, like Xingye Quan, Northern Shaolin, and Tai Chi, trained under Ma Fin Feng. The tension between Bruce and Wong culminated in a widely recounted challenge match, 
with differing versions of events circulating. According to Linda Bruce Caldwell, Bruce's wife, the Chinese community demanded he cease teaching non-Chinese individuals, citing the need to preserve the art's purity. The martial artists in San Francisco Chinatown wanted to challenge Bruce to a fight. There was a controversy. They wanted him to close down his school because he was teaching non-Chinese. Bruce's refusal led Wong to challenge him to a combat duel. The terms were straightforward. If Wong won, Bruce would have to close down his martial arts school. But if Bruce won, he could continue teaching freely. However, Wong denied agreeing to these terms. According to Wong, he challenged Bruce because Bruce had boasted about his martial arts skills, claiming he could easily defeat anyone in San Francisco. Wong insisted that his motivation was to silence Bruce's bragging, not any prejudice against other races. Most accounts agree that the fight lasted around 20 to 25 minutes, unusually long for such bouts. Wong alleged that Bruce initiated the fight aggressively, even attempting to jab his fingers towards Wong's eyes when offered a handshake. Michael Dorgan's book, Bruce Lee's Toughest Fight, suggested that Bruce's exhaustion, rather than a clear victory, ended the battle. However, Bruce and his wife Linda asserted that Bruce emerged victorious within just three minutes. Bruce threw the first punch. It did hit Wong Jackman around his eye. Bruce faced discrimination in his down on the ground, and Bruce was instantly over him with a fist raised and said, Fok and Fok, in Chinese means, do you give up? And he said yes. Overall, conflicting narratives surround the fight's duration and outcome, with varying interpretations of Bruce's conduct and stamina. There's no actual footage available of this particular confrontation, but it's depicted in the 1993 film Dragon the Bruce Lee Story as a more evenly matched fight, with Bruce ultimately emerging as the victor. Despite the lack of concrete evidence, Bruce declared his triumph, boasting of his mastery of martial arts in the area. Do you give up? Do you give up? I give up. I do. Wong, however, gave his own version of events to a Chinese-language newspaper in San Francisco and challenged Bruce to a public rematch, which Bruce never responded to. With this episode behind him, Bruce continued his successful career. He gained initial fame playing Kato in the TV series The Green Hornet alongside Van Williams, which propelled him into movie stardom. Over the following years, Bruce starred in several films including Ironside Marlowe, establishing himself as a bona fide movie star. During this time, Bruce Lee diversified his involvement in the film industry by contributing to movies like The Wrecking Crew and A Walk in the Spring Rain, taking on roles such as choreography instructor and technical advisor. Kung Fu is Kung Fu. It's not child's play. Concurrently, he developed Jeet Kune Do, a groundbreaking approach to martial arts, which he founded in 1967 during a period of unemployment. Lee established the Junfang Kung Fu Institute, aiming to revitalize traditional Kung Fu by emphasizing practicality, flexibility, speed, and efficiency. Under Jeet Kune Do, he emphasized modern training methods like weightlifting, running, and stretching to enhance strength, endurance, and flexibility. Lee believed that conventional martial arts styles had become outdated and rigid, seeking innovation and effectiveness. Transitioning away from Western cinema in the 1970s, Lee returned to his hometown to pioneer martial arts films. Once again, he found success with a brilliant idea. Returning home allowed him to enhance the martial arts scene there. Surprisingly, this also elevated his status as a cult hero in Hollywood, as his films maintained their allure keeping him relevant. Bruce's international appeal added to his enigmatic persona. He sharpened his martial arts prowess among peers, while his acting career flourished, offering him the best of both worlds. His contributions in Hong Kong and Asia showcased his dedication as a fighter and choreographer. Stories abound of his intense training regimen, 
supported by footage demonstrating his unwavering commitment to perfecting his craft. In this training montage featuring Bruce at his home, it's evident that he possesses remarkable kicking prowess despite his slender build. The kicking pad he utilizes is notably hefty, typically weighing several pounds. Despite its weight, Bruce's kicks are delivered with such force that even the holder of the pad is compelled to step back with each strike. Bruce's kicking abilities have become legendary, with numerous accounts attesting to his penchant for carrying the pad everywhere and inviting others to spar with him. According to reports, Bruce's kicks were so powerful that his sparring partners would be sent airborne. Moreover, Bruce was renowned for his exceptional punching strength and speed, forming a formidable combination. His punches were so forceful that conventional punching bags often couldn't withstand them, being torn apart by his blows. This highlights Bruce's intense dedication to his martial arts training and his ability to deliver devastating strikes with both his fists and feet, making him a force to be reckoned with in combat. Instead of leaving things to chance, Bruce Lee sought out new challenges. His punching bags were reportedly much heavier than those used by regular people weighing around 135 kilograms, almost three times the weight of a typical bag. It's rumored he could even tear them down with his blows. This alone was a testament to his incredible strength and skill. Bruce's push-up routine was also legendary. While most struggle with regular push-ups, he took it to another level, performing one-hand, two-finger push-ups effortlessly. While even completing a few push-ups with one hand is considered impressive for most, Bruce made it seem easy, adding the challenge of using only two fingers on one hand. Away from training montages, Bruce's prowess in actual fights showcased his true martial arts mastery. He was known to showboat at times, but his skills were undeniable. From his incredible physical feats to his prowess in combat, Bruce Lee's legacy as a fighter and martial artist remains unmatched. This individual was renowned as the preeminent fighter of his era, and his confidence in his abilities was unmistakable. There exists footage showcasing his remarkable prowess, where he effortlessly outmaneuvered a seasoned fighter while blindfolded. In a mere span of ten seconds, he skillfully subdued his opponent with various locks, ultimately bringing him to the ground. This feat, achieved while blindfolded, underscores the sheer mastery he possessed. It's truly mind-boggling to contemplate the extent of the damage he could have inflicted had the circumstances been fair. One of the most astonishing anecdotes surrounding this legendary figure revolves around his iconic film, Enter the Dragon. This cinematic masterpiece not only revolutionized martial arts cinema, but also solidified his status as an unparalleled icon. However, throughout his filmmaking career, there was a recurring theme. Individuals on set often sought to challenge him. Perhaps it was fueled by doubt in his abilities or simply a reckless desire for confrontation. Regardless, these challenges only served to underscore his unparalleled skill and dominance in the realm of martial arts. In certain instances, individuals sought to challenge Bruce Lee even though he typically avoided such confrontations. During the production of Enter the Dragon, filmmakers requested extensive behind-the-scenes footage for promotional purposes. Henry Wong, responsible for capturing this footage, recalled an incident where an extra dared to challenge Lee. This moment was documented in a making-of documentary released later. He says, I'm going to let you hit me three times. No. If you push me off the ring... I lose, but I'm gonna hit you back one time. So the kid did, right? Yeah. Of course, he never pushed uh, Bruce out of the ring. And then Bruce says, okay, my turn. It's hard to fathom what the young extra must have been thinking, defying such an iconic figure. It's likely he would have regretted his decision, particularly when faced with Lee's legendary one-inch punch. This technique, conceptualized by Lee, is truly remarkable. Usually, when throwing a punch, one aims from a reasonable distance to build momentum and strike with force. However, Lee's approach was unconventional. He stood mere inches from his target and still managed to generate enough power 
to push them back significantly. This demonstration of precision and strength has solidified the one-inch punch as one of the most awe-inspiring moves in martial arts history. Many have attempted to imitate it, but few have succeeded. This extraordinary move combines strength and agility, demanding considerable skill to execute. Bruce Lee, an iconic martial artist, showcased feats that seemed unbelievable without video evidence. Even now, many who try to replicate his actions fall short. Nevertheless, Bruce remains an inspiration, demonstrating that with determination, anything is possible. Do you have any cherished memories of Bruce Lee? Share them in the comments below.